Well, it's three o'clock and you are so welcome to today's Room Junkie Show. Now, I'm delighted with our guest today because he's a busy guy and he's given us of his time. We have Derek Byrne, who is the marketing manager with Fleetwood Paints, that hugely successful and phenomenal um, Irish paint company. So, Derek, you're so welcome today. It's all about Thank paint you. today. Yeah, so I'm delighted to be here. Delighted. So, no, any absolutely. I'll answer. Uh, Please, of course uh, you will. And uh, as people come in, say hello to us. Tell us where you are. Tell us if the sun is shining because it's shining here. And I think it's shining with Derek in Dublin as well. So the Fleetwood story actually fascinates me a little bit, Derek, because it's um, it's a lovely story. You couldn't make it up. It's almost like a movie story um, set up by Mr. Doyle, whose sons, Brian and Connor, and I think a third generation are still in. It's still very much a family business. But I'm intrigued because you started off making brushes. Yeah, um, we're, we're, for, we're predominantly a brush company. So we started off in 1950. Um, the Doyle family are, are, are the family behind Fleetwood Paints. So uh, Connor and Breen Doyle, who are still both involved in, in our business today, their father set it up. And they started off in a garden shed in Clontarf in, in North Dublin. Um, and they moved very quickly from there to a small little shop and uh, business premises that they had on Marlborough Street near where the Pro Cathedral is. Yeah. They started making uh, artist brushes, really. Uh, and very swiftly moved from there into decorative brushes. So I didn't know that. Okay. So um, it was a small craft business, literally handmade brushes in a small craft shop. Um, Connor Doyle, who is still our director today, used to be sent on his bicycle down to the Jacobs Biscuit Tin Factory. And we used to buy the offshoots from the, the biscuit tins, the metal biscuit tins. Uh, and we used to use them to make the ferrules on brushes, which is the, the little metal plastic. So that's kind of really how we started, literally a, a very small cottage industry. But the quality of the brushes that the two guys were producing were really, really exceptionally good. And they moved from brushes then into rollers and, and the vast array of kind of painting accessories that you would see today. Um, and we moved from that small shop on Marble Street to a larger premises uh, out in Inchicore, where we were for quite a few years. Uh, and then really the kind of business kind of really kind of ramped up from there. And I'm fascinated because like research and development, I think, was to the core even way back then, because correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. They had scientists and chemists actually formulating the pace and the products, didn't they, way back then? Absolutely. And that was unheard of, really. Yeah, but like the business is always kind of really, really focused on innovation. So a lot of the kind of the profit that we make gets put straight back into the company, into these areas. Like uh, you really just can't be standing still in the industry that we work in, really in any industry when you're in manufacturing, you have to be always looking forward. Um, but in the 1950s and 60s, like that was just imperative. Like you really had to sink or swim. Um, and in Ireland, particularly um, as a family business, they your reputation really went in front of you. So people became very trusting when it came to the Fleetwood brand of, of, of decorating products. And it was because of that the business managed to expand so quickly as well. Like if you look at who we're dealing with as, as customers, it's the small hardware shops all around the country. And predominantly, these are family-owned businesses. I've been in the same families for, for generations. Like every town in Ireland has one or two hardware stores, yeah. and they're generally family businesses. And quite often over the years, they've uh, moved into buying groups such as like Topline and Expert and Albany, but they're still fundamentally family businesses and the same people are working in it for generations. So you know something they have? They have passion. I love dealing with those shops. We have Foy's here in Letterkenny. There is um, Decker Plan in Sligo. You, you can feel the passion. They just love what they do. Um, yeah. And I think painters fell in love with your paint as well because it was making the brushes were better, so they were getting a better result. The paint was so easy to work with. The finish was good. You know, it's the old word of mouth scenario. If it's a good product, they will use it. Yeah, exactly. It's word of mouth and, and reputation, and, and you have to maintain that as much as you go. So, hello like, Walsh we... is here. I'm going to say hello to Helen because she's our guest, Derek, on um, Thursday. She's a master painter and decorator down in Wexford, and she's amazing. And the last day she was here, she literally had a hundred Fleetwood products with her. And anytime anybody asked her a question, it was just she was like it was like pulling something out of a magician's bag. And she would say, "This is what you use, and this is how you use it, and this is a roller to use." And oh gosh, even down to little things like the clips for hanging the rollers, and there were so many little practical things that I I hadn't even been aware of, which is amazing. Yeah. Miriam Canan, I'll take an odd question as you come here. Loads of people coming in to say, Moya Dixon is up in Dublin. Uh, I think she's in Castle Knock. And, no, I'm not sure. She loves Fleetwood paint. Miriam is saying, what is the best paint for the outside of the house and how long will it last? Live by the sea, Miriam Canan. 
she is in host. Okay, well, so how long would it last is is really all based about the condition of the wall that has been applied to and, and how it has been applied. So um, fundamentally, you need to remember that the climate in Ireland is vastly different from the climate in, in England and in the continent. And indeed, like we will all well know, I'm in Dublin, you're in Donegal, the climate in Dublin versus Donegal is two separate climates as well. Uh, Fleetwood make paint, exterior paint, it's a brand called Weatherclad, uh, uh, and we make it in our factory in Cavan in Virginia, and we test it there. So it is made for Irish weather, and it's tested for Irish weather. So for um, many years, uh, we have a testing station in our factory, which is surrounded by evergreen trees. It's a very nasty environment to be in. And we, because we, like, you, you quite often you will see paint cans with a certain year on it, it's like 18 years or 25 years longevity. And you kind of wonder how, how paint companies come up with this. Well, we literally paint samples and we put them out onto testing stations. And we, we have uh, shingles out there that have been painted for 20, 30, 40 years in certain of our products. We test them every year to see how they're reacting uh, with certain uh, conditions. So. Our weather clad paint has um, a biocide formula into it, a reactive one. So what it is, it kind of, it's a dormant product that it will only be used when the paint surface has been attacked by mold and by algae. And it is at that point that the product will start to react against it. So if you apply um, the paint uh, using uh, proper procedures, so you need to apply a kind of an active biocide to clean the walls beforehand, uh, a stabilizing solution, particularly if the wall is chalky and these kind of penetrating primers and then apply uh, two to three coats uh, of your of your top down product like there is absolutely no way your product shouldn't last 18 20 25 years if it is done correctly in those ways so and as always it's all about the prep as well you need the product the prep is vitally vitally important yeah. and here in Donegal obviously weather is a consideration for everybody so um yeah. I would certainly endorse I would have no problem with using Fleetwood paint, absolutely not, because I know it works. I absolutely know it works. Now, one of the big, that, oh, sorry, one ahead. Just one of the big problems we have in Ireland is red algae. You see it yes. everywhere. And the further west you go in the country, the more you see it. It's more prevalent in the west. You'll see it when you're driving down the motorways on the, the, the meridian in between the roads. It's, it's just all red. And in the yeah. old houses, it's red. Yeah, I know it, and I hate it. We had it in our last house, and we had to have it treated. Does It, it seems to only come on the exposed surfaces. Am I right about that? Yeah, it, 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 it thrives in certain kind of conditions like bright light and moist conditions. Uh, unfortunately, that, that kind of works for, for quite a lot of places in Ireland. So if you have that on the surface and then you paint on top of it, that paint is not going to it's not going to function in the long term. That, that mold, the algae will come through, it will damage the paint surface. So you need to treat that before you put on the top coat. So that's why I say, particularly when it comes to exterior paints, your preparation is so, so vital. Like, as well as you need to think about it, uh, I don't know how big, big the, the, the lady who asked the question, how big her home is, but to paint the exterior of a house can be a very expensive job. Um, if, if you're bringing trade guys in, they're probably gonna have to put in scaffolding. They might need to get some height for hire. Uh, it could last a week or two, depending on the scale and size of things. And then if you're gonna get outside windows and windowsills as well added to the job, it is a big, big job. So it's imperative that the product that you're putting onto the wall is gonna be worth the investment. And you're not, like th the cheapest part quite often of the decorating job could be the paint if professionals are coming in to do the job. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're getting the right product. Product that's made and tested for Irish weather is just so, so important, particularly for exterior paint. Okay, and even for interiors, I have said to these girls from day one, almost a year ago, you know, paint is the singular most transformational thing that you can use on your home. And to be honest, the cost is minimal when you consider the impact the paint will have. Absolutely. And I know lots of the girls have been taken up. People have never held a paintbrush before during lockdown, they have done. Yeah. Uh, so you must have had an upsurge um, in demand. Yeah, it, like tw the last 12 months have just been, it, like it's been a challenging year for everyone, particularly in manufacturing. We've obviously, we've a lot of people who work in our factory down in Virginia and they work in close quarters. So like to to, to be able to, to just carry on working as an oil environment has been quite challenging. But on the other side of it, the, 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 the amount of people that have taken up a paintbrush in the last 12 months that have never done it before mm -hmm. is phenomenal. It's great for everybody, I think. Um, and, and like we're definitely seeing that in our sales. We're definitely seeing that in the interest of people asking questions and, and trying to learn more about uh, basics of painting as well. Like, you know, so it's, it's really been 
I suppose it's been a crazy 12 months for everybody, but if you work in the paint industry in Ireland, uh, an added extra bit of <laughs> bit of fun. Well, I think too, there's more. It, it was something positive to do. Um, it impacted your home. People revamped their kitchens, painted rooms, upcycled furniture. It was almost like a mindful experience. It was something that actually helped them chill and relax. Absolutely, and I think like there's two two elements to this. I think people obviously are, are looking at their homes quite differently now. They're they're looking at their homes in this is a place where we are personally going to spend an awful lot more time. And if we can't spend on holidays, we can't spend on new cars or whatever it may be, let's invest that money in the home. So we're happy in the environment that we're living in. But I think that mindfulness connection that you just mentioned that is just so, so important. It's something that even I hadn't been aware of so much. Uh, and uh, one of the interior designers, uh, Aileen Hogan, that works with us uh, in upcycling furniture, had said it to me about a year or two ago. So obviously there was this craze maybe two or three years ago, these coloring in mindfulness books that people were buying. So they could open up a, a coloring in book and, and spend an hour or two forgetting about your thoughts um, and just kind of drifting away into, into this. Well, people do that with painting as well. Like, uh, like some people just don't like painting obviously, but, but some people will sit down with a piece of furniture that they've done a bit of work with and then just forget about anything that's kind of going on in their lives for an hour or two and then leave the job and then come back again and, and, and spend a couple of weeks working on a piece of furniture or painting a room or whatever it may be that we're doing now. Um, and, and it's a little bit of escapism, I think as well. And it doesn't work for everybody. It works for me. I enjoy painting. Me too, um, actually, yeah. And I find it, it like a kind of it's a, it's a great hour or two to kind of clear your head a little bit. I think too because you're using your hands, so uh, your hands are working as well, as, and the head is probably chilling a little bit. And I think too with sites like sites like Aliens, even with here, um, there's so much information online and so many forums where you can actually get. Like I always think with interior design, you need two things: you need knowledge and confidence. So if somebody's giving you the college, the knowledge and you're getting the confidence by doing it yourself, it's a really positive thing to do. Well, that's it. And, and you're never short for someone to help. Like, like every town in Ireland has an interior designer who's there, who's, who, who's willing to give advice, who, who, who's like, and like, like, I think we always think of interior designers as the, the Dermot Bannons or the Roisin Lafferty's and, and, and these big names who do big jobs, where the vast majority of interior designers in Ireland are small cottage industries, small little people uh, who who are literally the life and soul of the, the interior design community in their local communities and towns and stuff. And they are so willing to put out their hand and, and help out where they can. There's online forums, online discussions like we're having today. Uh, it's so accessible, whereas 10, 15 years ago, it might not have been. People might have might never even considered asking an interior designer for help and advice when, when they're looking at the rooms, where I think people are so more open to doing it now and are seeing the benefit of it now. Absolutely. I guess, Gas, that you say that. I actually last week spoke to six farmers over in a school in the UK where they were doing photography and design, lucky them, for A-levels. And I asked them, what's your perception of an interior designer? Who do you think uses an interior designer? And they immediately said, royalty, rock stars, very rich people. I couldn't be further from the truth. And as you say, it is so accessible. I can remember a year ago, I was critiqued big time because I decided on a mad notion that I was going to do a three o'clock live every single day and anything I knew I was actually going to share and teach. Um, and I was critiqued big time, but you know what? It's been the best thing ever. We have the most fabulous community here and everybody's learning and it's got us through lockdown. Um, question is coming in from Moya Dixon, a Fleetwood fan. Just wondering if you have a special paint suitable for kitchen units that are exposed to steam and cooking vapors and will last even if cleaning is needed often. What sealant and prep needed also? A lot easier than you think, Maya. A lot easier than you think. It is, yeah. It, it, people can be a little bit intimidated about painting kitchens. It is a big job. There is quite a bit of prep to do. Um, but once you kind of figure out and, and, and kind of get started on, on, on everything that they need, uh, it is a very rewarding and it is also a very unique economical way of, of, of sprucing up your, your Transform kitchen. Transform your kitchen, give you a new kitchen. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So we, we have a range of products that will kind of suit. And, and, and the first thing is, um, one of the big issues is, is sorry, is, is cleaning the kitchen down first. So obviously, Good old sugar soap, yes. Sugar soap, actually, yeah. Crud cutter is a great product as well if you can still yeah. find it around. All you need to do is rub your finger along the very top of a press and come away, and you can feel the grease that's there. Um, that all has to be removed. Once that's all off, uh, we've uh, kind of two main products that we would recommend, uh, which are our primers. There's one called Pure Grip. 
which is a water-based primer. Um, and this is very good for um, kind of maybe basic um, MDF cabinets that are in good condition um, and maybe don't have a dark color on it. Uh, the other one is, a, is a, 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 an oil-based version of that product called Bloxit. Now, um, I've, one of our um, main scientists down in the factory will, will, will always claim Bloxit is one of the best products that we've made in the last 10, 15 years. Helen Walsh mm -hmm. said exactly the same thing. She's using that on a daily basis. And I'll be honest, I haven't even heard of it, Derek, until she mentioned it. I, I have a can, uh, a one liter can of it in my, in my uh, garage at all times. I use it on, on so many surfaces. It, it's oil based, but it's quick drying. You can, you can paint it on and within an hour to two hours it will be touch dry. Um, you, it, will, it will block out anything except for the really dark knots that you'll get in wood. For that, you'll need a shellac primer to, to, to block that out and the tannins coming through. But it, it will stick to nearly every, any surface um, it, it will block out any stains. Uh, it will so block out. Painting the laminate kitchen. Laminate kitchens will yeah. go on as well. It's just a phenomenal product. So, um, like without going through all the details of all the steps you need to do, a good clean, a brilliant primer like that, and then the top coat I would I, I would highly recommend is a product that we call uh, Fleet with Advanced. Uh, which is this here. Now, this is the white version of it, uh, but you can get this mixed to any single color that you want. Uh, it comes in three finishes. Uh, you got a gloss, a satin wood, and then an eggshell, uh, depending on how bright you want the sheen and the shine on your cabinets. Um, the fashion has been for a much duller uh, shine over the last few years, so that's an eggshell product. Satin wood, which you see here, is kind of in the mid, and obviously a high gloss is a high sheen. But you can get that tinted to any color that you want, um, and it, it's water-based, so it's quick drying. But that will give you 10 years longevity. If the right primer, that's applied well, it is very, very durable. Or for about 20 days, 28 days, sorry, that will cure to an extremely hard finish. Will will prevent chipping, will prevent cracking and scratching and so on and so forth. So like in high traffic areas, like kitchen cabinets always are, uh, it's, a, it's a brilliant product to use, really is. There you go, Maya. Um, I'm fascinated about glass. Adele Roach, have you come, do you know Adele Roach? Indeed, yeah. yeah, yeah, great girl. She was here with me a couple of weeks ago and um, somebody was asking gloss or satin. She said gloss, I said satin. But I think for some of the darker colors, maybe you can, <clears throat> excuse me, get a good result with glass paint. But I have to say, I prefer a flatter finish, definitely. I would too. Uh, saying that like front doors, traditionally high gloss, dark colors look phenomenal, really yeah. do. As in, I like window frames as well. Um, but I think kitchen cabinets, I would be a, fan, a big fan of a, of a duller color. And I think eggshell is, is definitely the way to go. Definitely. Going back to the history books, 1977, Fleetwood partnered with a massive, a UK giant, Sherwin Williams. It doesn't get bigger than that. Yeah, so, uh, a US giant, actually, sorry, world giant. Now, they're actually the biggest paint company in the world now. So we, we in the 1970s, moved from our, our factory in Inchicore down to Virginia or up to Virginia and County Cabin. Um, the reason we went there, there are historical family links with the Doyle family and, yeah. and, and Cabin going back quite a bit of a way. But also Connor Doyle used to drive through um, um, Dunny or to Cavan on his way up to Sligo and Donegal uh, on his sales routes and just really loved the county, loved the lakes, loved the people. So that's how Fleetwood ended up in, in Virginia in County Cavan. And, and that's where we are today. We make all our paints in Virginia. So we uh, or sorry, where Connor and Breen were looking at the paint market in Ireland in the 1970s was quite different from what it is mm -hmm. today. And the quality of paints being sold wasn't matching the quality of the brushes and rollers that Fleetwood were producing. So the decision was made, well, like if, if others can't do it, we need to make paint that's good enough for Ireland and for Irish weather. And also Irish climate for particularly interiors when it comes to color palettes as well. A lot of the paint palettes that were being brought in were coming in from places like America and places from the continent where they're used to like really bright light all the time and, and it's a very different kind of paint. So like if you see houses in places like America, like really bright colors in the walls, really bright colors on the exterior because it matches the climate. It doesn't work necessarily all that well when you've yes. got in places like uh, Cavan and, and Donegal. Donegal. Do you know something? We used to live in Bermuda and our first son was born there. And like that, all of the insides were almost, they're all white really, or shades of white. 
but the outsides were pretty pinks and pastels and colours. You would never in a million years paint your house in Donegal or in Sligo or in Wexford, but they were perfect for there. Exactly. So it's yeah. just that, you know, that that was something that was missing from the Irish market in the 1970s. So um, you can't really go from not creating paint to creating paint overnight. You, you do need a lot of knowledge, a lot of training, a lot of equipment. Uh, so to do that, we partnered with a company called Sherwin Williams, who are today the biggest paint company in the world. Uh, they're based over in uh, in the US. So they helped us kind of get set up. They gave us all the technical information that we kind of needed to do all uh, uh, to just get a paint factory up and running. So we we created that down in Virginia. Um, and so the first can of paint I think came off the press around 1976. Um, and we've been making paint in Virginia County Cavan ever since. So it's gas. I, I didn't know until I was actually doing a house in a fall. It was a big, big job. It was a quite a large house. It was being completely renovated near the golf club in Cavan Town. And Anne, my client, said, I decided on the colour palette that picked all the fabrics. And she said, Anne, I'm only going to use Fleetwood paint. And I thought, oh gosh, well, do you know something? That house turned out amazingly, even though it's a while back. I posted pictures on my Instagram today. Um, it's still, those colors are still there on the walls. The quality was superb. The painters loved it. And I've been using Fleetwood since. This I love. I absolutely love these colors, yeah. Derek. Yeah, so that's our, our Vogue collection. So we launched a new high-end paint um, brand called, called Fleetwood Prestige uh, about four years ago, five years ago. Um, and we got two color palettes that get tinted into it. Uh, the Fleetwood Vogue is, is one you see there. We also have our Pantone collection, Pantone. Uh, for all interior designers, we'll be a very familiar brand. They are the world's authority in color. So uh, we have a, a, a collection with those with them as well. So anyone who might be using, let's say, Pantone references and materials and fabrics, uh, you can now get the paint to match it uh, with, with Fleetwood. We have an exclusive license with Pantone for that. So, but the Vogue collection is, is a phenomenal one. We actually have an updated version of that card on um, with, a, with a, a slightly different color palette on it. Oh, it's a little so, stronger, is it? We went to, yeah, so we kind of changed. And what, what we do, we, 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 we um, predominantly most of our, um, our paint sales is through our tinting systems. So in a lot of shops, you can go in and you can find a can on the shelf that's pre-mixed with a color. We call that ready mix paint. And you can just pick that off the shelf and you can go home and, 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 and work away. But the majority of Irish customers prefer to be, they're a little bit more discerning. They're, they're looking for a specific shade of green or a specific shade of gray that they want. And a ready mix collection on a shelf doesn't tailor for them. So the tinting system is, is what we really kind of get behind. So most of the local hardware stores that you go to around the country and the local independent paint retailers will have a machine or a range of machines from, from Fleetwood or different brands in the store. And then you pick up one of your color cards or a fan deck. Uh, you can find colors anywhere. You can bring in materials, like if you might have like I've a, often done it, yes. Absolutely, yeah. And they can scan the material in shop and match the color to the machine, and then they will I mix it. do it by eye, I have to say, but that's just me. It's probably easier if you're not sure. Do you know what I love about this? And I didn't realize it until I looked at it earlier. Ages ago, I did um, a video called Fifty Shades of Grey because yeah. people were having such trouble um, with their grays. Like I could have gone into your house and I said, Jack, what's that color on your wall? It's amazing. And you'll see it's Kensington gray mid. And I go home and paint it on my wall and it turns out green. Your hall was south facing and my hall was north facing. But you have, I probably, you probably can't really see this, but I've noticed the blue grays and the green tone grays and the lilac tone grays and the grayages, you have them very well identified here on this card. Yeah, it's great. very easy. It is so problematic for, for us as paint retailers over the last few years. Obviously, the, the trend to, to go from magnolia to gray is, is, has, been, it has been huge. Uh, but so many grays have a, a hint of violet in that. Or, or blue little, or green, yeah. And, and, and they end up feeling quite cold on the walls. Mm -hmm. Now, um, they are popular because people do like them, but quite often people will pick a gray and not realize it's in it. And then it's only when it gets home and it's onto a large expanse wall and suddenly that kind of bluey hue kind of comes through. And, and um, that, as I said, that can feel cold in a room. So to get a pure gray can be a bit of a challenge. So actually, uh, it, it's not on the card that you have there, um, but on this new version of the card, we have a new range of grays called Grafton Gray. Okay. And, uh, there's three of them here. And to get that gray, we literally took white paint and we added black uh, mm -hmm. to different gradients. So there's no additional violet, 
there's none of these blues or greens are coming through. It's just a very pure gray. But then, as you mentioned, the side is quite clear. You can see there are green grays, there are blue grays, because people are you looking. Know, it's okay because as long as you know the aspect of your room, if you know whether it's south facing or west facing or east facing and north facing, and the north one is the tricky one, but there are grays. I mean, my greatest successes have been in gray, and it doesn't matter whether they're north or I will pick the gray for it. I'm really curious. The question coming in here. I have my theories on this. I want to hear yours. Does Derek, this is Karen Glass, um, does Derek see the grey trend on paint coming to an end soon? No, not soon. I, Good, I just, me neither, me neither. <laughs> no. They keep saying grey gray is the new Magnolia. Magnolia lasts. No, I hated Magnolia. No, grey is not the new Magnolia. Grey is a new classic. I think it's going to endure. It's going to be here forever. I actually wrote an article for one of the Irish women magazines, Be Out on Friday, and it was about how colour can impact your mental health and your mood and i did talk about the gray neutral walls enhanced by the color the pops of fuchsia lime green navy all these colors are compatible with gray and give tremendous energy and they're not cold or boring not at all i think that i think you, you've mentioned that the key thing about, about gray as a palette it is because it's a wonderful neutral it goes with so many and it gives you so many different options like it, the tradition like my parents house magnolia is the the standard all through the house or has been over the last few years and and to match a color scheme with that is a challenge if you use a neutral gray all the way through it is like white uh, you can really add anything to it and it's going to look well so yeah i absolutely do not see it ending uh, what mm. i do see though is is probably people um, being a little bit more adventurous in the colors that they use. And we're seeing this ourselves when it comes to the sales. So I mentioned that a majority of our sales are through mixing machines. The benefit of those is that we can see color trends coming through depending on what people are requesting through the mixing machines because we extract all that data and we use that data to make amendments to such things like color cards. We drop colors that aren't selling, we add more if they are. And we're seeing trends uh, really go through darker colors over the last 24 months. I was just going to ask you that because I know I've been doing it a bit, but only in certain spots, like say for snugs, um, a nighttime room, maybe where there's paneling where you can have the aubergines and navies or dark greens and have lots of lamp light and soft lighting. So this room becomes like a cocoon. Yes, yeah. And, and people are doing that. People are, people are getting braver in what yeah. they're doing. Um, I, am, I, I would imagine that's only going to accelerate over the last 12 months when people are actually painting themselves an awful lot more. But you mentioned like rooms like bedrooms, um, like that cocooning feature that people are looking for in, in dark rooms and living spaces where they're not getting much natural light anyway. And they're like, fine, let's actually embrace that. Yeah. Think think downstairs, Lou, that doesn't get any natural light, go black if you want. You know, right. have impact, go, go mad. Maura yeah. Mackey's an interior designer down in Cork and she's saying, what are the top sellers? Is with Fleetwood at the moment, and she says grey all the way as well. Is she talking about colour? I imagine. Uh, what does she, she mean, colour or paints? I don't know. Well, more, I, let, more, what do you mean, colour paints or um, products? Well, well let, let's imagine it's paint. Say it's colour. Yeah, so there's a colour that we've been um, and, and we, we featured um, in one of our colour catalogues. I'd say maybe five, six years ago, called Grey Nuance. And yes. it was used by Arlene McIntyre in a show house at the RDS, um, probably maybe five years ago. And she did this kind of living room uh, scene in it. And since then, it has been impossible to get that color out of our top five. It is uh, gray, green, and a hint of blue in one. It is an incredibly versatile color. The living rooms goes in halls, bathrooms, kitchens. Um, we even brought it into an exterior color collection a couple of years ago because it was just so popular. Um, it's a very, very versatile color. Um, if you're looking for kind of an off-white um, that, again, is just being used so, so much, is one called Eider White. Ah, uh, that's the one that I put into um, the house in Calvin. Because I, I had to find, go back on my records to see which color I used. Beautiful yeah. color, actually. But it's got depth to it. It's not a cold white. It's a lovely, lovely color. Exactly. Yeah. It, and again, it's one of these ones that you only really notice the kind of the nuances of the color when it is seen against the white. So my sister actually put it in her hallway. And it's only when you see it against the white skirting, you actually realize the tone in it. But it just kind of takes like if you're painting a large, expansive area in a, in a white, per se, it takes away that kind of brightness 
gives a little bit of warmth to it and is a very, very adaptable color. So either white, if you're looking for a white, it is my oh, go-to. That is gas, that is, that's karma. That, that, only, only about 10 minutes before I went live with you, I posted that, but I had to go back at my paint spec to see what color it was because it worked perfectly with the, there was a Roma wallpaper, there was um, Clark, Clark fabric and everything. And it was a big space. It was a big triple yeah. height space with a big ceiling and it was just gorgeous. Yeah. One thing I love too about this, this paint, the texture of it. Somebody described it as cashmere, but God knows that is almost what it feels like. Yeah, so that is the actual paint that they get those colors get mixed into, which is a is our uh, paint called Fleetwood Prestige. So Fleetwood Prestige is a paint that um, uh, we've a, a, an engineer down in our factory, Krita Highland, who is an absolute alchemist when it comes to creating paints. She is by far the most important person in our company. Generally, she's phenomenal, and she spent five years making this paint. So. Um, when we um, approach making a new paint, we kind of have three stakeholders that we kind of consider the most. Uh, one of them is interior designers. Um, and we, we look at what you guys are looking for in a paint. And obviously you want the colors to, to ping out of the wall. You want the texture to be nice and smooth. Uh, are probably your two kind of go to, and obviously you've got loads of other requirements that you need, but they're the kind of the ones that you focus on. If you're looking at trade decorators, the people who are traditionally applying it, they are looking for a couple of different things. They're looking for something that covers well. They're looking for a paint that goes long so that they're getting good value for for, for money and the job is easy to use. Uh, and then the last stakeholder is obviously the, 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 the end user, the, 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 the owner of the paint. They are looking for obviously something that looks well. They don't care as much about the application if they're not doing it. What they care about is durability. Um, they don't want to put a paint in a hallway that is going to just rub off when the kids and the dog running in out of the thing starts rubbing against the wall. It, it needs to last. They're investing money and time into this job. They don't want to have to do it again every two years. So um, when you're creating a new paint, you can generally pick two of those three stakeholders. You can't really get all three. If you want a paint that's durable, you generally have to sacrifice certain things like the sheen level can't be too low because that will affect the durability. Uh, if you want paint to, to apply well, you probably have to uh, uh, sacrifice another element of it. So it gives you this conundrum where you're only going to please two of those three stakeholders. We challenged Karina Highland, our, our, our main uh, chemist down there, to create She's a paint that used all three. And she did it. As I said, it took her five years, um, a phenomenal amount of work. But I, I will stand over this is the best paint we ever made. And I'll stand over that this is the best paint sold in this country at the moment. Uh, it really is phenomenal. It can get mixed into any color, but it gives this velvety touch. Uh, it is a, a, a full rubbable paint. So um, like we have a thing called burnishing in paint. So particularly in dark colors, if you rub your knuckles onto a, onto a wall that is painted in a dark, you will leave a kind of a, a streak on it. That's called burnishing. And particularly around light switches and stuff, you get it a lot uh, when people are kind of touching to try to find it in a dark room. Um, that needs to be able to wash away from a wall. It can do it in Fleetwood Prestige. It won't do it in a lower mat pro product. But this is also a 2% sheen. That's as really as low as it can get. It, it almost absorbs light. So uh, the reason you want a low sheen when it comes to a good wall color is that you're not, the color you're seeing is a true color that you picked. It's not being affected by the light from the ceiling coming down. It's not being affected by anything. It also will hide blemishes as well, a low sheen. So you might have a bumpy, bad plastered wall with a few knocks and scrapes like most living rooms. Um, and, and a low sheen will hide all those imperfections for you as well. So, the whole thing just looks better in the end. Yeah. So yeah, and that texture that you're feeling in those cards, that's because the, the chips are real paint chips used. And that's something that I, I, to be honest, I would advise everybody to only pick a paint from a real paint chip. There's no point in going with a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. It doesn't work like that. I'm gonna have a peek to see if there are any more questions here. Uh, and then just on that as well, picking colors from, from websites as well. Big no, no, no. Yeah, um, if, if you can't get a chip paint card, ask for a paint sample, a tester pot. And, and Nelly, every every paint retailer in Ireland will, will make up a tester pot for of you. Of course they will. Oh, I mean, to, and the girls, they know the drill here. Paint on a card, two or three coats. Check it out all around the room in every bit different light. You know, awesome. check it with your fabrics, check it with everything. Keep playing you saying, what would I use to paint a concrete lintel step on the inside of a back door? It was painted red and oil-based, I believe. I painted it white with an eggshell, but it's peeling, thanks. Yeah, I think that red paint was the only concrete type paint for years, wasn't it? 
yeah, there's there's a whole there's you can get oil based, you can get water based kind of floor paints now. Um, so um, we we would do an, an oil based floor paint, which would be kind of ideal for kind of high traffic areas like this. They quite often as well, um, you you would need to add something to a masonry paint. Like there's a company called uh, Flutterall that make these additives that you can put into to go. Uh, there's certain like precast concrete can be very hard to paint, like window sills. Quite often paint will come off a window sill because the paint can't penetrate past the precast. So uh, Flutterall added to a masonry paint will, will give you that durability. Ability. But I, if it's particularly if it's a step that people are going to be using, I'd highly recommend doing a specific floor paint uh, that will work in a concrete for that. And will they come in colors? Like, will you get them gray and different neutral colors like that? Quite, quite often, yeah, it's quite often they're kind of designed for um, kind of industry stuff like garages and stuff that come garages, in. Yeah. That bog standard RAL colors, but but there are tintable versions out there that you can mix to any color. I'm just peeking around here to see it's more. They're all saying hello, 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 hello. Um, no, no more questions there as such. Uh, any unusual colors coming up for us? At the um, people, or can you maybe you can say? Um, it, we, as I said, we, we would look at our trends generally on a kind of a quarterly basis. We would download all that information from, from machinery and kind of see where we're kind of going. And um, the, the, the the, the, the kind of standard rule of thumb for paint manufacturers over the years is that red doesn't sell. And um, any kind of reds, we're talking from pink blushes all the way up to deep reds, uh, you can put them in. The blush is changing, isn't it? But this is it as well. So like you can put them into color cards and, and they look great, and but people just won't buy them. That is changing. So you're seeing peaches, these light pinks, and things that people would traditionally go nursery or children's room, but you're seeing them in kitchens now. Uh, you're, you're seeing them in gardens as well. As is, we were talking on earlier before, we've after launching a new wood paint for a for telegrams app because I say that'll be something very interesting for a lot of people. Yeah, so like this is again, people are now not just looking at their homes, they're looking at their gardens as well. This is a living they're all done, <laughs> so they're moving outside. Well, that's it as well. If, you, if you're if you're lucky enough to have a garden, uh, people are now considering it's okay, listen, like people are adding home offices into their gardens in sheds and so on and so forth. Uh, so they're looking to bring color in there as well. And it's been a, a huge growth market for paint uh, brands over the last few years. So we have a new uh, wood paint, uh, which doesn't need a primer, can go straight onto raw wood. Um, it, it, the color is excellent and can be mixed to any color. But people are starting now to use these kind of pinks, blushes, uh, kind of peachy tones as well. Again, like people might have thought like bathrooms as well, that kind of shades are now becoming a little bit more prominent, a little bit more commonplace in places like kitchens and living spaces. Um, and, and I suppose, as I, as I said, talk to anyone who works in paint over the years, reds don't work, but now they are. And that's probably the most surprising thing to us. In the last think about it, those colors are actually the colors of nature, the colors of flowers would come in. So why wouldn't they work in your garden? Well, Another I, I, question. Um, Nancy Keevan, what are the steps for painting a pine wardrobe doors, please? Is using a roller work better than a brush? Nancy, do I need to use a primer? What's the best paint for kitchens? Okay, well, you've covered kitchens. The pine wardrobes, okay, so again, we, we talked about Seal before. the nuts. The, 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 the knots are, have to be sealed. Uh, and you will probably, most people at home probably have a, uh, an interior door or interior skirting that's been painted at some point and the knots haven't been sealed and you'll see a slight little kind of orange glow coming where the knot is. So you need to seal those with a, with a shellac primer. We have a product called Terminator, we'll do that. Um, and then you can prime the entire surface again using our blocks of primer, the oil-based primer. Uh, we would advise a slight sanding between coats. It just gives better adhesion when you're putting on the next coat. Uh, I mean, like with a very, very fine sandpaper, just to, to, to tidy it all up. Uh, sometimes you might get little bumps from paint drying or, or, or little imperfections, and that will get rid of those. And then two top coats I would recommend, particularly on, on wardrobes where they're going to be opened and shut and there'll be a little bit of wear and tear. Um, again, Fleetwood Advanced in eggshell, satin wood or glass, mixed to any color that you want so you can match your, your doors of, of, of your uh, uh, wardrobes to the walls if you want to kind of have a, kind of a built look, built in look effect. Um, but the whole job sure seem bigger as well if you do that if you, if you, if you paint yeah, well. on the walls the, the wardrobe's the same color as your walls now the questions are coming in derek you probably have are you under pressure of time oh, no, a couple no, more no. minutes um jane canning also in dublin port marnock would you recommend painting garden concrete walls yes absolutely, absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what, my big tip for painting exterior walls and gardens is paint them black. Um, and I, I say this to people and they kind of get a little bit shocked. If, if you paint a wall back in your garden and allow the foliage to grow above it, the wall disappears. And, and what you're left with is what's in front of it. So um, my, my my friend bought a house in, in, in Trincondra a few years ago and they got this lovely kind of back garden and it would, had an old brick, red brick wall that had been plastered in certain places over the years. Uh, and they went for a dark color on that. And, and what it, it did, it kind of, the, the walls almost disappeared. The, there was foliage eventually started growing up on, on trails above it. Uh, and, and it just, it, it like, it's a phenomenal addition. Like, um, these are one of these things that you probably need to do a Google image search, black garden walls, and, and see what that looks like. But, you know something? I couldn't agree with you more. People are afraid of black. I actually wrote about this in that same article. Uh, they're afraid of black. And for me, I think the black in interiors and probably in exteriors as well. It's a bit like the eyeliner of interior design. It does give it a pop. I'm looking at, we've got a balcony out here and the, the railings are black. And against the, the massive trees, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And like when you look at it interiors as well, like quite often like, um, it's 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 the investment that you put into your 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 other furnishings, the big investments, like the, the money that you might spend on a couch or an armchair or a lamp. Um, are these the things you want people to see or you to see, or is it the color behind it? And if it's if you want the the, the furnishings to to give the life and the pop, go really really dark in in your background color, um, and 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 a black or an inky black with a hint of blue, very very popular as well. Um, and and as I said, what it does, it kind of hides everything behind it and and, and brings everything in the foreground up to the front. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So for gardens. Uh, have a look, have a think about it, but go for a black wall, pure black. Okay, sometimes I think you have to go bold or go home. Mary yeah. Byrne is saying, moving into a new build, Lucky Mary, what do you recommend to start with? Want to live in the house first to get a feel for it? That's a brilliant idea, absolutely. Isn't brilliant. it? I yeah. say, listen, Jack, you have no idea. People will come to me and say, I want to get everything done now. I want to finish. And I'd say, please don't. Because if you're in that house for six months, you know where the light is, you know how you're using the space, you will make a decision in six months' time that's right and one that's wrong now. Absolutely. So if it's a, if it's a new build, um, obviously the place will have to be painted at the very start. Um, paint it with, with a, a vinyl mat. Um, and and then apply uh, after that your top coat. Right, can I stop you there? Why a vinyl mat? I'm curious about that. It's the first coat I imagine onto raw plaster. Uh, oh, sorry, okay. If you if you apply a high durable paint like a washable mat onto onto raw plaster, it's 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 not going to function properly. So the first coat generally would would be we would recommend our extra plus uh, or a trade vinyl mat. Uh, to go on and, and that's your base coat and then you can live in the house for the next 12 months and then take room by room job by job and then pick your top coat depending on the, on the room that you're doing so if it's a hallway you want a washable mat or a soft sheen in, in those high traffic you know what i think we have three boys two dogs i couldn't have survived house always looked pretty well but it wouldn't have survived without a washable paint no absolutely not Just and, and the, the big thing as well is with touch up when it comes to paints yes. So touch up is if, um, if if you paint a wall and then in two or three months time you go back and you need to touch up a little bit because you missed somewhere or something's after happening. And um, quite often those paints will dry to a different finish and you could see the touch up on it. That's a that's an obviously big negative. You don't want that. Uh, in our washable matte paints like that Fleetwood Prestige we were talking about or, or Extra Plus as well, the trade vinyl matte, the touch up is incredible. So you can go back and you can just paint over little places and you will never see where it's been repainted again we've one of our our trade uh, sales guys uh, mark who lives down in cork um his stairways he's got three kids and a dog and the stairways is just constantly being battered and stuff you imagine high traffic area he doesn't wash or, or clean his walls he gets his can out every couple of months and he just goes along with his paint and he paints away the dirt because when it dries you just don't notice it so uh, these things are important as well touch up in in paint uh, you need to you need to make sure, particularly in areas where you will be probably going back to to paint up again a little bit later. Because so, your house is busy, everyone's house is busy, so it has to be able to withstand life. Otherwise, it's just, it doesn't matter how beautiful it looks to start off or how amazing the color it is. Um, Patricia Murn and Kelly Beggs is saying, "Hi, folks. Very interesting discussion. What is recommended for outside wall that gets pinky mold, sea facing gable? We talked about that already, Patricia." So you you need to kill that mold first, Patricia. So um, uh, uh, we we have a, a product. And I'll try and show you an image of this can here. It is 
um, specifically for doing that job. And it's called Fleetwood Fungicidal Wash. I'll try and get it where the camera is. It's there. Yeah. You buy this in five liter containers. What this is, is a very, very strong formula. You apply it, uh, it goes on like water. You, you, you leave spray it, it on or brush it on? Brush it on uh, or spray it. Uh, it will go on, you leave it for 24 hours. That will kill those molds that's sitting there on the wall. Then you can wash it off and then apply your primer or paint straight on top of it. What that means is it's not sitting there dormant, ready to, to grow out again. Um, but as I said, like if you do the proper prep beforehand, it will kill the problem and then use Fleetwood Weather Clad, which has the kind of mold preventing formula inside it, and that will fight it when it comes back on top again. So um, particularly, as I said, when you get to the West Coast, high moisture, uh, sea air as well, that can you know, be quite problematic. Um, preparation is key. So. Yeah, of course it is. Derek, I could keep you here all day. <laughs> we could find a million things to talk about. But I genuinely, I am absolutely thrilled that you made the time because I know you're busy um, and it's a busy time of year. But listen, thank you so much. Really enjoyed that. And I know that lots of people, for everybody else, is popping in later. Actually, do me a favor, guys. Put a little replay note in if you pop in later because I'm just curious. I'm just being nosy to see who, because um, I know that lots of people watch at nighttime and lots of people watch over the weekend. So just to know when you're here. Um, so we're saying hello to all of you. So on Thursday, we're going to continue the paint theme and Helen Walsh, our master painter, who was such a hit uh, last time she was here, will be back. So I'm sure the Fleetwood story will be continued again on Thursday. So Derek, thanks from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. You're a great guest. And that was just so informative. It was brilliant. That's great. And thanks so much for having me. Really no, fun. you're so welcome. Okay, guys, so stay safe, stay fabulous. I shall see you on Thursday at three o'clock with Helen Walsh. And everybody's saying thank you. Okay.